So while most people consider concrete to be the pivotal foundational piece of the home, I've covered in our previous episode, the cost of dirt and why it's so important to have that certified pad before you go vertical. But on this video specifically, we're gonna talk about some of the timeframes associated with concrete, why it's so important, and the overall cost associated with this critical component of the foundational structure of your home. Let's get to it. As a quick recap, it's a four to six week process to be able to get to slab. And this is roughly the associated time frames for this project specifically. Our first step is involved with the surveyor where he's gonna come out and he's gonna put building points appropriately to the quarter inch of where the building will reside. Soon after that, we'll come out and we'll have our concrete company take care of layout. And then we'll double check that. And that typically is a three day process, one day for pins, one day for layout, one day for double checking. After that, we'll go ahead and we'll get our excavator out and we'll have one day for dig and usually two to four days to be able to place rebar based on the associated engineering documents that are located in our architectural details in our plan sets. After rebar set, we're gonna call for our first inspection to be able to ensure that all the details are met as required by the engineer. One to two days after that, we'll go ahead and we'll schedule our pour for our footings. And once that's complete, we'll be able to move on with the next critical step which is gonna have our engineer come out and mark those building corners one more time so that we can be able to get any of our epoxy or wet set hold downs in place within the footings prior to us being able to put up our stem walls, which usually is somewhere between a three to five day process to be able to assemble those stem walls and get any of our additional upright rebars in place and ready to go prior to our second inspection, which is gonna be our stem wall inspection, which usually is a one to two day window. After that, we're gonna move forward with our second pour, get our concrete trucks out here. Usually this is where a pump truck is involved to be able to get our stem wall poured quickly and efficiently. And this all usually takes place in a one day time frame. After the concrete sets up, within 24 to 48 hours, we start stripping those forms and getting those removed off site so that we can be able to start with underground plumbing. Usually it's gonna take somewhere between three and five days to be able to get to a point of top out where all the plumbing set in place, our pipes shaded, and we've topped it out to be able to ensure that there's no leak with any of our drainage pipe that'll reside underneath our slab, after which our concrete company will come back, compact, add AB, additional compaction, which overall is a two to three day process that includes the last part of that phase, which is gonna be our termite pre-treat, which is gonna take place underneath the slab, after which we'll have one day to call for our final slab inspection, and usually an additional one to three days to be able to take care of pour depending on how large the slab is. Overall, as mentioned, this process is somewhere between four to six weeks based on the overall scope of the project. With that said, let's get into some of the steps that we're currently at and talk about some of the details with our footing rebar prior to pour and talk about some of the costs associated with this overall scope of work. So when we're thinking about concrete work, we're gonna talk about the cost associated with the work. First is gonna be the overall amount of concrete that needs to be placed, as well as the overall scope of excavation. The deeper that we have to excavate usually is gonna increase our cost. And the second component is gonna be the labor and the materials associated with our rebar details. Obviously, the more complex our engineering, the more rebar that's gonna to need to be put in place prior to pour. And this is a great example to illustrate the overall scope of this portion of work. As you can see here, in the front, we have our standard footing for our stem wall. And then we have a spread footing that's located in this area, which just so happens to be the corner of the interior of the home that extends out to an open patio detail in the back. Now the open patio detail in this case is about 500 square feet of patio living, which would be amazing for the homeowner. But it also has an open third and half of the four side that'll require more engineering for uplift. So for a lot of homes, a typical rebar detail is going to have two number four rebars in the footings that reside around the whole perimeter of the house. But as mentioned, we have additional uplift for this large open patio space and a large oversized three car garage, which also requires additional engineering for three number four rebars to be placed along the perimeter of the garage and our exterior patio details. Now, while it doesn't look like much, there's obviously additional time associated with the labor component of adding an additional piece of rebar in place as well as the additional material itself. As for the cost of footings, 
One of the things that's gonna increase that is the amount of overall thickened or spread footings that you have located throughout the property because we'll have an additional rebar mat detail that'll go in here that will once again entail more materials, more labor, and more concrete. So while we were sitting in one of our thickened or spread footings that's located at the corner of the building where there's a transition from exterior to interior, the reality is on this property specifically, we have about 15 of these footing details, which is gonna entail a little bit more labor associated with the build. In a standard residential home, eight foot top plate that's being built on let's say a track home basis, they're really gonna be able to engineer this to be able to reduce the overall amount of concrete that's utilized. And that's why a lot of times in track home building, they're gonna use maybe a post tension slab or a monolithic slab detail with the minimal amount of structural components necessary to be able to build that structure. But when building custom, usually there's just a little bit more cost involved because of the materials and labor associated with giving the client exactly what it is that they want. Typically our standard detail is going to be a three-part pour, which, which is gonna be a standard and tested methodology for placing concrete. So soon after this, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move on to the next stages, which is getting our stem wall placed and ready for pour, and then eventually the slab. On this house, it's about 5,100 square feet of space that we'll be utilizing for the main slab. And that doesn't include our exterior patio details for some of our flat work that aren't associated in this specific bid that we have for this home. Overall, the cost to our client is gonna be plus or minus about $100,000 for this slab detail. Although I will say that on a 4,100 square foot home, dependent on the complexities of the detail, that line item might range somewhere between, let's say $65,000 and maybe $120,000, depending on the engineering and the overall details that are associated within the architectural plan set. And while the cost is gonna differ from project to project, I feel like a good range for a 4,100 square foot home with an oversized three car garage. And although the concrete price is gonna vary based on the complexity of the plan set, I feel like in this case, when we're talking apples to apples of 5,100 square feet of pour, we're gonna be talking somewhere between, let's say 80 to 120K based on those complexities and specifically based on the engineering details for that property. We hope this information is helpful for any of you that are looking to build your own custom home. And we definitely encourage you that if you're building outside our marketplace, which is Phoenix, Arizona, that you check with your contractor to be able to ensure what that budget might look like for your foundation. As always, we appreciate you following along our journey. Feel free to check out some of our other episodes for some key information on cost associated with development. And as always, have a great day.